I'm in the studio. We'll sort it out. Welcome to Toyota Warriors Post Game Live. Greg Papa back with you on a night that uh, Draymond Green kind of lost his temper, not as an official so much, but as a teammate. The Hall of Famer Chris Mullen is here. Darrell Wright, you were exactly right what you said on Warriors Halftime Live, that it was not what he said at the official John Butler. It's what he said at John, at the, his teammate, uh, the young James Wiseman. And basically what Draymond said was, uh, come on, man, come on, man, F that, F that, referring to that pass that got swiped by Nerland's Noel. And as they go back, you see Draymond yelling at Wiseman, and Butler tees him up right there. So... What's your interpretation of how this went down? Uh, I think, you know, it was just, it was the wrong wrong call in my opinion. You know, this happens, you know, throughout the course of the season when you're trying to throw the ball in the post and, you know, your guy might not seal him or, you know, it might be a... Not as an official so much, but as a teammate. The Hall of Famer Chris Mullen is here. Darrell Wright, you were exactly right what you said on Warriors Halftime Live, that it was not what he said at the official John Butler. It's what he said at John, at the, his teammate, uh, the young James Wiseman, and basically what Draymond said was, uh, come on, man, come on, man, F that, F that, referring to that pass that got swiped by Nerland's Noel. And as they go back, you see Draymond yelling at Wiseman, and Butler tees him up right there. So what's your interpretation of how this went down? Uh, I think, you know, it was just, it was the wrong, wrong call in my opinion. You know, this happens, you know, throughout the course of the season when you're trying to throw the ball in the post and, you know, your guy might not seal him or, you know, it might be a bad pass. So I think it was just the wrong, wrong play, the wrong time. And I think the referee thought he was talking to him. And it looked like Draymond was upset with James Wiseman for not holding off Nerlens Noel. A similar play happened in, in, with the Lakers, where Draymond tried to throw the ball to James Wiseman. He didn't catch it. To me, I was always taught it's always the passes. You know, he's in control of what happens. And if, if the ball's turned over, it's the passer. But yeah, they, he could have held off and been a little more physical. Um, but again, the leadership, how you speak to your teammates, is as important how you speak to the referees. There's got to be some control there. Yeah. And you're still trying to teach this incredibly gifted young player who's going to be a superstar, teach him the NBA game. How that happens on a daily basis is important. Marquise Chris immediately chimed in. You know, he's hurt, broken leg, bad ankle, watching at home. And he said he, he wasn't yelling at Sean Butler, the official. He was yelling at his teammate. But the question is... You know, and he is going to take James Wiseman under his wing, and he's going to teach him defensive rotations, how to play in this league. But there's a lot of tact. Uh, you know, some guys would be spicy with their teammates, maybe Kobe Bryant, maybe Michael Jordan behind closed doors. But you got a 19-year-old, very impressionable young man trying to do the right thing. And to call him out like that, and again, that's not why he got run. He should not have been run. Right. But should he be speaking to his teammates like that in an open gym with microphones around officials and not do it in the closed practice setting uh, you know it's the heat of a moment but it, once again this is a rookie it's a 19 year old rookie that played what three games before hit the first 15 games so he's learning and a lot of things is going to be you know you have to take patience you know it takes patience to talk to young players I was a 19 year old rookie I wasn't playing as many minutes important minutes as James Wiseman but it is ways that you can you know relate things to your teammates and let them know hey you you need to do this you need to do that so it, it, it's different ways to to you know express your feelings to your teammates I you know at halftime Darrell and I spoke to Tim Hardaway senior he was similar to that. He was very outspoken, uh -huh. uh, very competitive, very fiery. Um, but there is a, a there's, there's, there's a tact, as you said, to how you approach guys. James Wiseman seems like he's a sponge. He wants all the information, and how that's relayed is important. And everyone has their own style, right? Everyone, you got to be true to your personality. Steph is very laid back. Draymond's a fiery, competitive guy. Uh, and that may be their relationship. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah. How do you think this is handled among the coaching staff? Did, does Steve say something to Draymond? Yes, we got it wrong. Maybe we should have a mechanism to challenge this and look at this and go back and listen to the audio. Hey, John Butler, he's not yelling at you. He's yelling at his teammate. But why is he yelling at his teammate? I, I think like that. Sure. Is that something Steve should bring up to Draymond? I'm, I'm with Darrell. I think it was totally the wrong call by the referee. Draymond Green should not have been ejected. Um, yeah, so I think that should be a challengeable call. And I think they could easily go, they go to, they have the audio, as you said. They go to the screen, they go to Secaucus. It was just, uh, 
because we had a, we had another play where Bullock missed that layup and it was an invert whistle. That's really right. what it was. It was an yeah. invert whistle, yeah. and they could have changed it. Yeah. All right, so James Wiseman played on after Draymond got ejected, and we thought, you know, arguably, his best game as a young pro last night against the Marcus Aldridge. We knew it would be difficult, way more difficult tonight against Mitchell Robinson. Durrell, but he played well tonight. He went 24-47. He had 15 points. He had eight rebounds, five of nine from the floor, made five of seven from the free throw line. And he was active, and he got a lot of run after Draymond was, was run late in the game. Yeah, I thought it was a good game for him, you know, especially Actually seeing two young, good shot blockers, uh, Norlis Noel, who's known for his defense, and also Mitch Robertson, who's known for his defense. So I thought he did a pretty good job with, you know, holding his own against these guys and going, you know, attacking their bodies like we talked about in pregame and trying to finish over top of them. So I think he had a pretty solid game tonight. Another learning experience after playing against Anthony Davis, Marcus Sol, Lamarcus Aldridge, these two young fellas, as, as Darrell said, Norlis Noel. And uh, Mitchell Robinson, similar to uh, Wiseman in yeah. stature, a very yeah. similar uh, style of play. I thought he did a good job. Every night I watch him, I see a lot of positive. I, I don't, I don't really see the negatives with him. So you lose Draymond Green, and obviously your defense eroded. It wasn't good in the first quarter. It was better in the second quarter. Then in the second half, it fell apart because you don't have Draymond. But he also does so much offensively, sets the high drag, the screen for Steph. They run the offense through him. So Steph's role in the second half changed, and they had to bring Nico Mannion in right away to get in their ball tender to get Steph off the ball in the second half. Well, minus Draymond. I really thought offensively they were really figuring. Is playing really well. But James Wiseman getting better and better in last night. His best game of the NBA in game 14 when he scored a, a so far career high 20 points. Earlier, Kareth Burke caught up with Theo Robertson, a former Cal Bear who is now one of Steve Kerr's player development coaches in charge of grooming James Wiseman's game. The best is yet to come. Do you let yourself get a little excited about his potential? Do you see his career maybe two years down the road, three years down the road, four years down the road and think this kid is really special? Um, obviously, I think we all think he's a, a extremely special player. I have no idea uh, what his feeling would be. I wouldn't even want to put anything out there in terms of, you know, what that might look like. Um, when we talk about how he wants to develop and grow in his career, there's obviously a ton of guys that we look to to um, add things to his game. Um, but we try to, you know, really focus on trying to be the best James. Um, that, that he can be. And so from that standpoint, um, he's been really, really good about um, studying a lot of different players. We have a number of them on our team that he can learn from on a daily basis as well. Uh, but certainly a lot of other great players around the league. And um, it, it, it's exciting to be a part of this process on a daily basis just because there is so much growth even uh, from one day to the next. Who are the guys around the league that you have him study on film? Um, it, it ranges. Um, Miles Turner is, is one in terms of uh, defensive pick and roll coverage. Uh, we've watched a lot of Anthony Davis. We've watched a lot of Giannis. Uh, we watch guys like Daniel Tyson and Boston. Uh, we watch Jokic. Um, depending on the skill set, depending on the day, um, we're trying to add any and everything that makes sense uh, for him and his game. And so he's just been a sponge um, in terms of watching different people, understanding what they do to make themselves uh, great or make the game easier. Um, so there really is no limit on who, who we watch. Just out of curiosity, 